Dear students, this is an introduction to social work from an international perspective. My name is Inger Kristin Hegnalsvik and I'm an assistant professor at Western Norway University of Applied Sciences, Department of Welfare and Participation. I'm a social worker by profession and my main teaching and research interests are child welfare. This lecture is an introduction to the course Social Work from an International Perspective. Many of you, and maybe most of you, are about to join a virtual classroom for the first time. The tutorials that you find in the syllabus section will guide you through the Canvas features. The assignments we give you at the beginning of the course will help you to get to know the virtual classroom and your fellow students. During the first week, it is important that you become familiar with the new surroundings where you are going to spend time together with fellow students and teachers during the next eight weeks. The more time you invest at the beginning of the course, the easier it will be for you to take part in the different activities during the rest of the course. Since we do not meet each other face to face, we kindly ask you to upload a video in the virtual classroom where you present yourself in a way that gives us an idea of you as a person. Instructions and guidelines for the video will be given in week one. As you will see, the teachers have made a presentation of themselves too. In this course, the focus is on commonalities and differences between countries in the field of social work and how these factors contextualize and influence the living conditions. During the course, you will work on assignments that focus on challenges related to social work and poverty among children, adults or elderly. You will work together with your fellow students in different ways. In the curriculum plan, you can read the expected learning outcomes. The literature list is divided into topics that are crucial for the course. Please take a look to get an overview. In addition to the compulsory literature list, we encourage you to search for literature in English describing relevant issues in your own country. How to work in this course. You need to study the situation of social work in your own country and present your findings to your fellow students who originate from other countries. In addition, you need to ask for both general and specific information from your fellow students about the situation of social work in their countries to be able to compare and present the commonalities and differences you notice. The reading list in combination with short screen lectures will help you when doing your studies. The structure of this course. The assignments are structured in a way that guides you through the topics of the course. You will be assigned to work with challenges related to social work with elderly people, adults or children. You are going to work together in smaller groups with students from two other countries and you will be asked to compare the living conditions in their country with your own. You have to ask for information as well as give information to your fellow students. You might experience that it is challenging to get the answers you need due to the language barriers, different understanding of words or because the systems we are working in are different, even though they at first sight seem similar. The lecture by Eivind Samnoy Tefre will introduce you to comparative methods and how to compare countries. Social work is a context-based profession. To be able to compare aspects of social work in your country with social work in other countries, you need reliable information. It is important to have access to reliable sources and knowledge about social work in your own country. You also need to know how to search for 
and find reliable information and to decide what information and data are comparable. Combined with an open mind and curiosity will give you a rich opportunity to learn about social work from others and your own country. Before you start working on your comparative paper, be sure you have decided what to compare. You need to have a clear, feasible questions that you can manage to answer in order to do a good comparison within the time limit of the course. It might be helpful if you find questions that are interesting to you and of course will increase your knowledge. Your sources of information are the available literature, internet, statistics, your practice experience and the knowledge from your fellow students and teachers. Reflection on learning is an important part of this course and important for your learning process. The lecture by Anne Karin Larsen will introduce you to how to do reflection on learning. It is important to be aware from the very beginning of the course that reflection on learning throughout the course is one part of the final exam. Online learning resources. Before you start to work on the comparative assignment, you will be introduced to an online case where you will meet people in different situations. This case is meant to be an inspiration for your further work. Most of the literature you need for this course will be available as PDF files in Canvas. By participating in an online conference room, you will learn to know your fellow students and teachers and get a feeling of belonging to a class and a group of international students. Expectations from the teacher group. The teachers are looking forward to working together with you. We hope that you are eager to learn and curious to get to know more about both your own and other students' countries. It is a short course, so we encourage you to pop in to the online classroom every day to check up on what's going on. Studying only weekends is not sufficient due to the fact that you are doing comparative work and are dependent on each other. We also kindly ask you to be active and spend time in the library at your campus to ask and search for literature. What you can expect from the teachers? You will receive feedback on your assignments when delivered on time. Teachers will also be moderators and participants in online conferences, and you can expect teachers to deliver the content. Then, on behalf of the teacher team, it's time for me to say good luck with the course. We hope that you will enjoy the experience of learning in a virtual classroom and that you learn the learning outcomes that you are expecting.